You're listening to LCC Alumni Stories, a show dedicated to highlighting the amazing alumni of Lansing Community College. I'm Steve Robinson, president of LCC, and on each episode, I have the awesome privilege of getting to know one of our many inspiring alums and hearing about their experiences at and since leaving LCC. The LCC alumni community is expansive and far-reaching. They're an incredibly diverse group of people, representative of all walks of life, working in hundreds of industries across the country. LCC Alumni Stories shines a bright light on the alumni who make positive contributions to their communities and showcases those who've overcome obstacles and barriers to achieve their academic and personal success. These are their dynamic stories. My guest today is Rola Nashef. She attended LCC right out of high school and completed her courses and transferred on in 1993. She's a filmmaker, director, public speaker, and professor of practice at Michigan State University in fiction filmmaking. She's also the creator of the award-winning film Detroit Unleaded, which is considered the first Arab-American romantic comedy in the history of American cinema. Welcome to the show, Roa. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I am so excited to talk to you. Me and you too. know, we we I just watched the trailer to your film. We should probably start talking about Detroit Unleaded. Tell me about your film. For sure. Uh, well, Detroit Unleaded is really my debut feature film. Mm-hmm. I wrote. It was the first time I had written a feature length screenplay. Okay. So it, it's um, before Detroit. Before the actual feature, I, I made a couple of shorts. Okay, so you made a couple films. short films. Yeah. And, yeah. Exactly. Um, but bef- even before that, the, the real inspiration for me to become a filmmaker was a lot of different things. You mm-hmm. know, I, I'm, you know, I was like kind of a natural storyteller, okay. um, you know, growing up, you know, telling stories or loving, you know, stories and hearing stories. Um, and also have like a, a real, um, immigration background. Okay. And so when I was growing up, I just never really saw my family story, you know, represented. In, in the in the films that you see uh, being made. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I took a lot of inspiration, you know, uh, from American films and American filmmakers. Mm-hmm. Um, but I kept kind of turning it onto myself and my family and my community and thinking, you know, this would make a great story or this would make a great film or my experience in, in here would make a great film. Um, and so I was sort of missing that uh, image, you know, from the media I was t- I, I was seeing, uh-huh. even though I was deeply inspired. I mean, there's nothing better than like American television in the 80s, you right, know? Right, right, right. Um, or, you know, Karate Kid and um, John Hughes films, you know, these are the films I grew up on, right? Right, right. Incredible stories. <laughs> Amazing stories. But you didn't see yourself in these stories. Yeah, uh-huh. you know, just in terms of my ethnicity. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, but at the same time, what was interesting about it is, you know, Hollywood cinema tends to be um, you know, not very good to the Arab image. Um, and so, right. Yeah. Right. Which, yeah. So there was like this missing Arab image. And then at the same time there was, I was kind of being bombarded with negative Arab imagery, you know, as right. Arabs as terrorists, Arabs as kidnappers, you know, whatever it was. And, and public media are just popular media is replete with those kinds of negative images, yes. right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Exactly. So I kind of grew up with that. And then, um, I found my way to film school. Um, I mean, that was one of the driving forces of I want to tell a story. Right. Um, and so uh, that was really one of my, you know, uh, dr- driving forces to become a filmmaker. So and you're and you're teaching filmmaking and, str- and screenwriting. And I imagine that one of the biggest things you share with your students is for them to write about their own from their own perspective, right from their own uh, uh, point of view, and that's exactly what you did with with your first feature film. Absolutely, um, I I love to help students um, sort of look inward and look at their own life experiences as great material for mm-hmm. stories and for and for storytelling. Um, you know, a lot of times people think that you have to come out with the next Star Wars, you know, to, right. to have a, ne- you know, a, a hit film or something. Mm-hmm. But in fact, if you look inward and look at your own family, your own community, your own upbringing, you will find so many quirky, interesting, lovely, you know, dramatic uh, stories, you know, within your own experiences. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great teaching and great writing, I think. And you you mentioned your own story, your own upbringing. Now, your your first feature film takes place in Detroit, but you're from here, right? You're from Lansing. Where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? Yeah. Um, Actually, yeah, I love Lansing. I grew up in Lansing. So, Mm -hmm. 
My family and I immigrated from uh, Lebanon, okay. from uh, southern Lebanon mm-hmm. in 1978. Okay. It was the middle of the, or the beginning of the Lebanese Civil War. Okay, right. And we had, you know, suffered some tragedy, um, with, you know, within the war. and Tough time for your family in very Lebanon. Tough. Yeah. yeah. And it was a really, really hard time. And, uh, you know, we lost a beloved family member. Oh. And that was kind of like the last straw, you know, and my, and my parents immigrated here. Uh, my uncle had um, had already uh, been here. He was an engineer at Ford. Okay. And so our paper, you know, he had applied for us, and our papers came in time, and we immigrated. Mm-hmm. Um, and we came here to um, Lansing, where my dad got a job at General Motors, which was Oldsmobile. <laughs> yeah, then. definitely. So yeah. how old are you at this point? When, when... Um, I'm five. Okay. So you immigrated when you were five. Yes. Okay. And so your 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 dad's working at Oldsmobile. Yeah. And what what were what was your upbringing like here? As a, as a recent immigrant uh, from Lebanon. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. We lived in um, a cute little neighborhood called Cochlite um, on the south side. Okay. I, I don't know that I know it. It's on the south yeah, side. Yeah, it's okay. on the south side. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a very working class, super diverse neighborhood. Okay. You know, all my friends were African-American, uh, Caucasian, uh, Mexican immigrant, you know. Okay. So diverse neighborhood. Very diverse. Mm-hmm. And it, and it's like, you know, the, the factory becomes the great equalizer a lot of times, you know. And so everybody's family was really just like ours because right. they all worked in the factory or, you know, had like these sort of middle income jobs. Sure. And the, we, we see that in cities in the Midwest, this sort of, kind of shop culture, right? We have right. a working class identity, particularly neighborhoods, folks who work in the auto industry. So that that's, that's where right. you, you came from. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so it, within the neighborhood, it was a lot of fun. Me and my brother had a blast. Um, <laughs> my... <laughs> Uh, my youngest brother wasn't born yet at that time, and when he was, he was just like a little baby. So, so he was born here. Yeah, he was okay. born here. So okay. we, you know, he's the American. <laughs> we well, call you're, him. You're, you're, yes, of course. <laughs> I was gonna say you're you're an American. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. So, you know, he's like the 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 born here American. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, my brother and I, you know, would be playing with all of our friends who were super diverse, and they they kind of became our outlet to American culture. You know, where our parents were, you know, busy with life. They had just immigrated. They're working hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of times in school, I would have a hard time understanding the teacher because I wasn't grasping the language, like, well enough yet. Okay. So my friends kind of became my outlet to American culture. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of almost instantly, like as soon as I got here, began to see American culture through a very diverse lens. Right, right. Know? So you had, a, you had a diverse friend group with lots of varying perspectives. Exactly. And that probably, I mean, the, the visual image that comes to my mind is almost like the surfaces of a diamond, right? There are lots of different facets of the way that yeah. you're the light light is being refracted to you. Yep, that's that's a great uh, analogy. Well, that's really cool. So so you um, did you graduate from high school on, on, down there on yep. the south side? Well, we eventually moved to uh, the west side okay. where I went to Waverly High School. Okay, you went to Waverly. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm a warrior. <laughs> um, and it was, kind, I mean, it was really the same, you know, almost the same demographics. You know, I still had like a really diverse, you know, uh, friend circle. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and I... You know, but school was like always kind of a challenge for me. It was it was a struggle. I felt like I couldn't find my niche. You know, okay. um, and one of the things I excelled at was writing. Cool. But it's like, but n- nothing else really made sense. Okay. Um, and so I, after high school, I remember thinking I didn't even apply to universities because I just, I, my, it's not like I had failed, but my grades were okay. Mm-hmm. Like they weren't like, I just didn't even have the kind of know-how or maybe self-esteem at that point to, okay. apl- you know, I thought, okay, I didn't, I didn't do well in high school or I did okay in high school. So I didn't really apply to universities where, where my other friends were going to universities. Um, and so th- I remember right after high school where I did struggle, uh, my friend Art Leah, who's still my friend to this day, mm-hmm. Um, you know, she was like a great student. Like both my friends were really great students. I was more like the C student. Okay. All right. And so they got into these great universities down South Uh and she, I remember her telling me, listen, I'm going to take a class this summer at LCC. It Uh was philosophy 101. Okay. Introduction to logic. Um, she's like, do you want to take it with me? I'm like, yeah, okay. I'll take a class with you. And I just remember (laughs) going to class and everything starting to make sense where I was, it was kind of foggy in high school 
But the second I learned logic and philosophy and like A plus B equals C, <laughs> everything kind of started to click. I and love I this. began to really love education. And I couldn't get enough of LCC classes, you know. Well, that makes me super happy. So that was in 1993, right? That was in 1990. Oh, 1990. Yeah. So in 1990, you essentially uh, tag along with a friend to take a philosophy course in logic. Mm -hmm. And that's when education starts to make sense for you. Absolutely. Here at LCC. Yep. I love that. They're, they're philosophy faculty listening right now just doing fist pumps. Yeah, that, a, that is so cool. A big shout out, really, because uh -huh. I always, throughout the years, I've always thought about that class. And I, I've always thought, what would have happened to me if I didn't take that class at LCC? I've always thought that throughout the, all my years. Well, I don't even want to think yeah. about that. Right? that. That's fantastic. So so you you take that class with your friend who's mm -hmm. going to somewhere else, but you stay and you keep taking classes. Tell me about the your experiences here at LCC. What else did you take? And you, you know, I you know you transferred in 93, but um, tell me a little bit about what it was like to be a student here. Yeah. Um, first, I felt the that I fit in right away. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, it just felt like there was people at varying degrees in their in their education and that's how I felt too. It's like I wasn't the straight A student mm -hmm. and I didn't know what I wanted to do in terms of college, but I knew I loved LCC. And I loved coming here and like driving down and getting dressed and like exploring all of these topics with no real pressure of like what is your major? What are you gonna major in? And you know, and right. I, and I could afford it mm -hmm. as well, you know. Um so I remember taking so many different things. Um that really didn't even relate to each other, um, which in the end actually helped me in my filmmaking. So I took classes like accounting. I was exploring accounting at one point. Sure. I, I hadn't tapped into my like creative side yet. Um, I was taking public relations classes, uh, marketing and marketing research classes. Like I was studying statistics, um, writing. I, I took like writing one and two. Um, oh, I was taking like uh, music history classes, which I love, like blues history. Fantastic. I remember I did a jazz class once. Um, I did uh, some exercise classes, you know, so it was just like this all around, uh, just like b bettering myself, exploring and bettering myself. Right. And based on the topics, it's almost like you were putting putting together your own independent filmmaker curriculum, right? That, I, as you were ticking them off, I'm thinking, yeah, a filmmaker would need that. Yeah, a filmmaker would need that. Exactly. Oh, pre-law. That's right. Indeed. I was in the paralegal program. All right. Cool. After a couple of years, and I went to paralegal. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to be paralegal. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many contracts I've written on my own because I'm an independent filmmaker. Yeah. And I can't, you know, I wasn't always able to afford a lawyer when I was making my film. So it's like I had to write, you know, me and my producers had to write contracts on our own. Um, and so all of these different classes, all of these various explorations mm -hmm. I was doing, they all had their place on a film set, you know. And I didn't even know I was a filmmaker till really later on, you know, like three, four years down the road after LCC is when I discovered film school. That is fantastic. And, mm -hmm. I, and I tell you what, I, I am, I, it makes me so happy to hear that all those experiences you had here uh, have been so helpful for you mm -hmm. in, your, in your filmmaking journey. Now, so you take all those classes, you transfer in 1993, where'd you go? Um, I went to MSU. Uh -huh. So I started taking classes at Michigan State. Uh -huh. um, and that's where I became involved in the Arab Student Organization and uh -huh. kind of found my political voice and mm -hmm. started organizing, which was essentially producing. Um, we would like stage like big parties and, or bring in artists to, to speak mm -hmm. and um, just or, or professors to speak on certain topics or have debates with people. And so it was really me organizing. And I would also do stuff like go to student council and get $10,000 for Arab Awareness Week. I remember we like would stage like a whole week of culture, like Arab Culture Week. Uh -huh. So I was learning how to put together budgets and proposals and go to, you know, money people basically and say, hey, can we have this money to do this event? Which is essentially exactly what a filmmaker does. Fantastic. And it sounds, and I'll just say this, sounds like taking those uh, principles that you learned here at LCC and putting them into practice at the big university to, to, to further not only your, your artistic vision, but, you know, things you wanted to see happen culturally, politically. Absolutely. So did, uh, what are your degrees from, 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 are they all from Michigan State or... Here's the funny thing, <laughs> is that I don't have any degrees. 
All right, tell me so, about that. Okay. Okay, so after Michigan State, I went to um, try to go be a paralegal okay. at Madonna University. All right. Okay. Um, and I remember I was like, okay, I'm I'm gonna do this, but I was starting to be like, I don't know, am I a paralegal? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I started taking classes at at Madonna. I'm gonna finish my paralegal degree and, okay. and get a nice stable job. Right. This was my thinking. Okay. Um, I go there and I start. And that's where I made my first move to Detroit. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I moved to Detroit, and I was an AmeriCorps. Um, yeah, All right. and I started working at the Arab Community Center for Economic and Social Services. Okay. So this was like, you know, this is really the premier Arab American uh, community center. Mm-hmm. It's really the only one like it in the in the entire United States. Right. Um, and they had a cultural arts program there, and so AmeriCorps placed me there to do my, you know, uh, volunteer requirements. Mm -hmm. And so for the first time, I was working at an Arab community center, and I was meeting Arab artists for the first time. And I was organizing them and doing shows, and, you know, Mm -hmm. I was like an intern, um, but it was like my first job. Yeah. And um, and I started meeting all these artists and creative people, and I'm like, I feel like I'm like them, (laughs) you know? And it turns out you were. Yeah, I'm like, there's something about these people. I feel like there's something about them that I identify with Mm -hmm. or like we're on the same wavelength, something. And I was starting to learn from them and starting to be inspired by them, Um, which I think is such a unique experience as an Arab American. I mean, how often do you meet an Arab artist? And I was so lucky that I was, I had this like kind of internship where the first artists I was, and they were the first artists I was ever meeting in my life. So not not only Arab Americans, but the first artists, right. right? And so, and of course, there is this center of gravity, cultural density of uh, Arab American culture in Metro Detroit. We're exactly. probably the largest in the country, right? Yes, it's yeah. the largest in the yeah, country. Yeah. So if you were going to come into contact with Arab American artists, it would, you know, D- Metro Detroit is is the place, right? That's right. And so it, I'm guessing that that's where you made your first short films. Were they were they also um, uh, themed or centered on a- Arab American topics? Or? Yes. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so it um, after working there for a couple of years, mm-hmm. it was like uh, there there was a new film school that opened up in Michigan called MPI, the Motion Picture Institute. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, the, and after kind of like a series of events, I saw the ad in the paper and it said, hey, you go to film school. Like it was a like quirky little, you know, yeah, ad, like, you know. Like, like, hey, you, you know. Like, draw tippy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool, yes. So I was like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. Um, and so after I went to film school, uh-huh. because I, you know, moving to Dearborn, it just reminded me, it was so cinematic. Because it was the first time I was in, like, this constant, this neighborhood filled with Arab Americans. Where mm-hmm. before, you know, in Lansing, there's not really an Arab American neighborhood. And so it kind of had this cinematic vibe. Like, it's, I feel like I'm in a, you know, like a Spike Lee movie. Sure. You know, or, Absolutely. And you very know? visual. I mean, when thinking of the trailer of, of your film, the, you know, the the, the, the motion and the colors. The, yes. The, I mean, the, there's this kind of iconic look of, of Detroit. That's right? awesome. Uh, yeah. that, whole, that whole area that you capture in that f- those fast motion cuts and everything. That's right. And that's what I wanted to catch. That was what was inspiring me to become mm-hmm. a filmmaker is the community that I was living around, my upbringing, everything was kind of working together. And then it was like, oh, I think I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> so so in your teaching at Michigan State, uh, the, clearly this is a, a like a practitioner field, right? You are a filmmaker, so you're teaching, what, what is it, uh, uh, screenwriting? Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about your teaching and your courses that you're Absolutely. teaching. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I... Um, been teaching at Michigan State now for this is my fourth year Mm -hmm. and um, I'm really surprised at how much I fell in love with it Mm -hmm. you know Um, I feel like it's I I knew I was gonna like teaching I mean you know I've always liked teaching and I'm a director and as a director you're kind of a natural teacher you know you have to teach to a certain right right you have to have a point of view and get get actors and and cinematographers to to realize what you've got up here that's right right. Mm -hmm. yep and my brother is a teacher and a very gifted teacher as well. Mm-hmm. And so, it, you know, it's kind of in our family. Right. Um, and so, but I was just surprised at how much I love it as much as filmmaking and just really love to help students um, pull out their stories. You know, mm-hmm. um, they, they are so, they're such inspired young talent. And it's just been so interesting and very inspiring to me just to see them kind of working through their stories right. and, and helping them. Um, tell the stories that they want to tell. 
Well, there's nothing like it. As a teacher, I have to ask you a question. So, you, so your um, your feature film predates your teaching at Michigan State, right? Mm-hmm. Did you do any film teaching in the in the film space before you made your first film? No, no. So here's mm-hmm. here's my question: You're still actively making movies, mm-hmm. right? Have you found that the practice of your teaching has had any impact or or, or influenced how you approach your filmmaking? Absolutely. Yeah, I tell th- me how. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's helped me to um, just be first in the practice of being in front of people, mm-hmm. you know, all the time, yeah. um, talking about film all the time. Because, you know, as a director, especially as an independent director, it's not like I work on a television set where I'm directing every week. Mm-hmm. And so it's, you know, so it's it's years between films that I'm actually on a set. Exactly. Um, and the rest of the time I'm, I'm producing and writing mm-hmm. and casting and, you know, doing all these pre-production or behind the scenes things but it's it's not often that I'm always on a set okay um and so but being a, a becoming a professor and being in front of people all the time and really talking about the principles and fundamentals of filmmaking um has deeply inspired me you know in in my current projects and just kind of kept me in more of a practice of doing this more often you know being in front of people talking about it um and helping people uh, fulfill their vision. You know, that's what you do as a director too. You're helping the actor fulfill their performance to fulfill how they want to achieve this performance. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's what I felt parlayed, you know, well into teaching is okay, this is kind of like a nice like shift here, uh-huh. you know. You're administering, of course, um, but you're also inspiring, you know. And so that but, is so cool and it sounds like not only has it had an impact on your filmmaking, but it must have your students are incredibly lucky, I think. Yeah, and so to 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 hear about it, all this the the diverse experience in the filmmaking process as an independent filmmaker. You're not just a director, you're a producer, you're a fundraiser, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're an accountant, all these all the stuff you learned here at LCC, yeah. you take that back to the students. And I'm imagining you bring like a lot of case study example type um, anecdote into into your class sessions. Yes, absolutely. And that's been fun to sort of share my stories throughout my filmmaking process um, and to bring in actual like, you know, uh, examples from my work and mm-hmm. uh, other people's work. And also what's been really fun is to introduce students to independent cinema. Right. Um, you know, a lot of times independent cinema, you know, in, in more, you know, uh, uh, younger generations, you know, gets a little lost. You yeah, know? it was hard to find. I mean, I grew up in Metro Detroit. It was Maple Art, right? Yes. That was like, that's where we went to to see in the in the Detroit film, you know, at the DIA and exactly. everything like that. But it must be. Is it easier to see independent films now with online stuff, or is it harder? Definitely, I think it's definitely easier. That's it's what more, I guess. yeah, it's more accessible. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of times, you know. Uh, you know, students sometimes don't, they don't know about independent like directors or mm-hmm. short films. I love to introduce students to short films, um, so that's that's been fun. You know, just kind of showing them, you know, maybe more experimental work or um, like weird stuff or you know, um, just something that is like not so much mainstream narrative. Um, and of course, th- along with that, naturally comes a di- like a diversity, right? Um, you know, in ethnicity and gender and and everything um in the the types of stories that you know i show them or and that i think that helps to bring out their uh their storytelling you know um and to kind of look to their own um experiences as great material for their stories right like we talked about that's that's great writing right that's what people uh you know writers have to bring out their their own experience you know, before we end, Rola, I would love to hear a little bit about what you're working on now. Oh, you, sure. you know, so so your um, uh, Detroit Unleaded comes out when 2012 is that when you said so? Mm-hmm. So it's I know that there's still a lot of interest around the film, but it's a decade old, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, what are you working on now? Um, yeah. So um, my next project is um, it's a it's a my second feature, and it is about four Lebanese girls, Lebanese American girls, in set in 1995. Okay. Um, so it's a kind of a period piece. It's a uh-huh. little flashback. But you're doing piece. what you're telling your students. You write what you know. Right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I mean, I consider the story really the story of it's really our coming of age story that never was shot. 
<laughs> you know, it's oh. our sort of 20 something coming of age, like me and my friends, when I say our, uh -huh. yeah. um, you know, me and my friends, our experience as Arab Americans, you know, growing up in the 90s, mm -hmm. um, coming of age in the 90s. Right. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, na navigating, you know, all, everything that, that you navigate in your 20s, you know, love, marriage, career, um, right. you know, family. Um, the big and, stuff. Yeah, all mm -hmm. the big stuff. Now mm -hmm. it's like, okay, party time's over. <laughs> yep. And before social media and the internet. Yes, and, yeah. exactly. And that's what I love about it too is that, um, and that's why I always see it as like, this is the story that should have been shot. Like, 20 mm -hmm. years ago. <laughs> That's right. Like, um, it's almost like I'm hearing you say, like, where was this movie you right. know, for me? You know, yeah. So that so that's cool. So that is what you're working on now. Where, mm -hmm. where are you at in the process? Yeah. Where, yeah. Um, so we are in September. We're launching our capital campaign. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this was something that kind of got pushed back, you know, with the with the whole pandemic. I can't even imagine years. COVID and filmmaking. Right. The, it, that must have really, really been an impact for you. It was very interesting. You know, like filmmakers are good at like navigating through you know hoops you know mm -hmm. that's what producers do right. you know we got to kind of like leap over these mm -hmm. very you know go through these hoops mm -hmm. and leap over obstacles and find loopholes and you know try to get here and try to get that um and so i always i always feel like the past couple of years you know filmmakers probably did well navigating covid and work mm -hmm. you know um because it's like it's it's a, just another loophole. <laughs> like it's another thing we have to do um, in order to get our films done. Um, so, you know, that and, and that that's kind of what happened in the past couple of years. You know, film crews began to adjust um, and started to, you know, work under the restrictions. Mm -hmm, At first mm -hmm. it was like shut down. Um, and, but then they came back and then started to work under the restrictions Got and it. were able to fulfill and like, you know, do principal photography and c carry on with shoots. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the beginning, it was rough because nobody knew. Um, right. And so where are you shooting this one? Is, uh, what was that? Where, where are you shooting the, your new um, uh, film? Oh. Like like physically? Oh, uh, it will be shot here in Michigan okay. um, on mm -hmm. the east side of Detroit uh -huh. or uh, Gross Point area. In Gross Point. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, it's after things began to kind of lift, restrictions began to kind of lift. Um, now we feel it's a time to, okay, launch the project. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting our capital campaign in the fall. Um, raising our budget and should be shooting hopefully by 2023. That's, that's exciting. That's so do you have a title that you're sharing or not yet? Not yet. Not yet. I'm cool. not sharing I mean, the title had to yet. Ask, had to ask. Well, that's cool. I'll be really looking forward to that. Thank you. And Rola, I have enjoyed this conversation a ton. I'm so uh, proud and excited about everything you've done with your experiences at LCC. Thank you. Um, and I really can't wait to see that film. And it's been wonderful to talk to you. Yes, you too. Thank you so much. Abs appreciate it. Absolutely. LCC Alumni Stories is recorded, engineered, and produced by Steve Robinson on LCC's downtown campus. The soundtrack, Who Told You, is licensed through DeWolf Music and was performed by Ian McCanty. Thanks for listening. Learn more about what our alumni have been up to at lccconnect.org. And if you're an LCC alum and want to share your story with me, send me an email at steve.robinson at lcc.edu. Until next time, keep learning. This is LCC Connect on WLNZ 89.7 FM.